So we've talked about what it takes to become a database programmer a little bit. We've got into some specifics in regards to the programming type pieces. Uh, so all high level up to this point, and you're probably still sitting back kind of confused on well, how the heck do we do this? Well, let's get into the specifics and hopefully this uh, calms all that confusion and build your confidence a little bit. And again, then we'll allow you to go try this. And, uh, and once you get it working, uh, it's all uphill from there, okay? So I built myself a little, uh, little database application here that's going to display students from a database. What do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and start this. And um, I'll go right here and I will click on display students and boom, all of this data showed up in a uh, list box. You might be going, well, whoop de doo Well, I <laughs> uh, hope you're going, oh my God, that's the most amazing thing I ever seen. Um, because what this actually did was it opened the database uh, and it read uh, from a, um, it read from the tables in the database, actually joined the tables, I believe, uh, and, and then, then displayed it all. Not that big a deal, but one of the first steps in actually getting into, the, into connectivity of the database. But as you can see, basically, this is one of the first programs that you're, you've seen where it can connect to a database via the code. All right? All right, so let's get into the steps of actually doing so, okay, and make sure, and let's talk about a little bit on how we do this, uh, what we gotta make sure is correct. Uh, so if you do get errors, you can kind of go look at them, and then really the steps I'm walking through, connecting, opening, executing, and so on, okay? And so the first thing we need to do is we have a database. Uh, and like I said, in this particular course, you're going to use your database. You're going to use SQL Server. I believe everybody should have that by now because you've already done uh, some SQL Server work for us in, in this, as, when we began this course. In my example here, I'm going to use a good old DBMS, um, uh, DBMS college. Uh, that was from IT111. If you recall, we had student courses, students, and courses and instructors. Okay, And so I'm going to play around with that a little bit as I take you through the different steps of uh, the different things you can do with databases as we go through it. Again, in this particular situation, the goal right here is to learn how to uh, connect. And then also we'll do, do a quick uh, select statement. When we have our databases, obviously it's a good idea to have our, um, uh, our, our Visio or our schematic so you understand exactly what the database looks like and so on. But in this case, we'll just kind of have and go here. It is important to be that, that when the, if you're going to connect the two, we've got to be very consistent on what we're doing. We've got to reference the, the, the table names like uh, exactly. We can't be partially correct uh, or you're going to get an error message. We've got to recognize the, uh, the attribute names or, or the column names. If we fat finger that or misspell it, it will not work. You'll get an error message in your program. Uh, it can only do exactly what you tell it to do, and it can only access and do stuff exactly the way, the way you have it spelled. Okay, and so in this case here, I have my database set up. I did pre-do some uh, some some inserts. Um, one of the things we talked about in uh, in IT 111, you know, you learned about inserts, and we taught you this because we're going to take these exact inserts in a lot of ways and cut and paste them into our program here. We'll probably do that in the future week, okay, or the next week or so. And so you're not going to be inserting anymore in like this, okay? Your inserts are really, for the most part, are going to come from uh, doing these in a database application. And you're actually going to write an insert that looks just like this in the programming code. But for sake of example, for this particular situation, and we'll get into that when we talk about doing inserts in code again uh, in, in future weeks, but right now we're going to pre-populate this because all I want to do is do a simple select statement, get it connected and get you working on this and, as fast as we can, okay? So I pre-populated these, all right? All the way through even the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the many to many tables, student courses, all right? Everybody good? Everybody good? Cool, 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 cool. And so everything is here. I, I create a referential integrity. And again, for the most part, what you know, what the script should look like 
if you ever create a database for somebody, it's pretty much down to the referential integrity. And even these you can incorporate into the creates, correct? And so in doing so, that's all you would really have when you're creating a database. You wouldn't have anything else. I state that, then I go on the opposite side saying, if you do have lookup tables, those second normal form tables, more than likely you'll pre-populate those. And you may do that in a script like this, okay? Uh, so there's a lot of different ways we'll go about that. And here's the cool part. We're going to practice some of these things throughout the remaining piece of this course. So we're going to play with databases quite a bit. All right. So let's get started. So we have our database. So it's important, number one, that your database is actually executed and it's done quite well. Uh, so you may want to come in no matter what assignment you're doing and making sure that your database is up to date. You execute it and you're getting that everything is complete and, you're, and everything is there the way it's supposed to be. Because uh, what can happen is, is that if one is off and, and you're trying to look at the other and everything looks right, you're going to get all confused. Make sure this database is in your database and it's running the way it's supposed to. Meaning, whatever it is gonna be, you're going to be working on, whatever database you'll be working on, make sure um, it is working correctly in SQL Server. Okay? Once again, you're going to be using SQL Server on your local machine. All we got to do is connect to that. All right, so let's kind of get started with that as we kind of go over here and look at how we're going to do this. This particular program is going to do a couple different things. Number one, I mean, really, there's really one thing is going to display students. That's what we want to do. Okay, if I sit back and talk you through the steps again, what I need to be able to do is connect to the database, open the database, create a query to the database, execute that query to the database, read the result set and loop through it, okay, and then close it. Those are the steps. I highly recommend you write those down. You might want to, you know, put this thing in reverse a little bit, this video in reverse, and listen to that one more time and make sure you have those steps. And you need to think about the same thing when you're ready to write your program. What is it I need to do and what steps do I need to accomplish it? Once you kind of get a handle of this, it becomes old hat really fast, like I said. In my particular program, you'll see that I have a form main, and I also have a mod out here. I actually have a standard module, correct? Okay. Uh, and so in a standard module, I'm going to use for, I know I don't have a multiple form scenario, but I can use the standard module in a multiple form scenario. You will be playing with multiple forms here coming up again soon. So this standard module really comes into play. And we call it database utilities. And what's going to be cool in here is that it's very standard. We're going to create our connection string, create our open, and create our close. Yeah, those are going to be common no matter what you're doing and where you're doing it and what, on what form you're doing it on. Okay, so let's get in here and kind of look at how this actually what this actually looks like. Okay, in this case here, I have a standard module. Okay, when you look at it, I here's the beautiful thing, guys. Cut and paste this. Come out, get this code, and cut it and paste it into your program. It should look very similar. Okay, what's not going to look too similar? So again, what's this going to do? Number one, I am creating a private connection string right here. Okay, it's going to be utilized within these functions to open a database and to close a database. That's what's in here, open and close. Isn't that beautiful? These will be called from my different forms. I'll show you that in a second. It's going to open it based upon this connection string. Remember what I told you connection string was, right? I'll get this off of here so you can see this a little bit better. It's a connection string that is uh, basically defined by SQL Server in this case on how to open up a, a particular uh, database. This is pretty simple, okay? I have, so because I'm going to have the provider and it's telling me that it's a SQL Server database, SQL OLEDB, okay? That's our provider. There are several different types of providers. Maybe we'll cover those a little bit more in the future of this course. It's going to tell me what the server is, okay? This server is local, meaning it's on my machine. Yours will be the same for all your programs in this course. However, if it was located somewhere else, okay, be it on the internet, or be it in a network or whatever, you would put the path right there. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. But for this course, it's just local. Life is grand, right? 
Life is grand, but this is where you would change it up if you got to find a path, meaning if it's sitting on the E drive or the D drive or the Z drive or whatever, you would need to go find that. Does that make sense? Or if it's sitting on an IP address, you would put that in there too. You're going to tell it the name of the database. It has to be identical to the name you gave it in SQL Server. So if you called it DBDBMS College, it must be DBDMS College over here. Okay? Can't be college is and you hope for the best. It has to be exact or it's going to give you an error. Okay? Integrated security, we'll talk about that in a little bit, what that actually means. But for the most part, it's secure, okay, in this case. It's what SQL Server wants you to do. There's actually some things I'll show you that you can go look at that actually has some different options here. But for the most part, this is pretty much standard of what a connection stream should look like. The only thing you would really have different if you had an external database could be the, with the server location, and you probably would add a password and an app and an ID. In this case, we don't need it because we're doing it on our machines. And in this, SP, this SSPI, this integrated security, is basically saying, I'm going to use your Windows security uh, to get into this database. That's what that is actually saying. Does that make sense? Here's the great part, people. Once you have this, this uh, string working and you get it connected for the very first time, you got it for the rest of this course. You'll never have to tweak with this ever again. Now, of course, you're always going to be tweaking it as a professional uh, programmer, but for the most part in this course, it's just this. So it couldn't be any more simpler, okay? Right? And the only thing you're going to really change will be this right here, the name of the database that you're going to be using for your assignments and your projects, okay? You'll be changing that, okay? What this is going to do is I have a couple different pieces here. This is going to open. For the most part, you can cut and paste this. This does not change per program. Every time you do it, this is how you open. It's going to do that OLEDB. I told you that's the, that's the thing that Microsoft, that's that class that Microsoft allows us to use. We're going to create this con administrator, okay? And we're going to take the connection string, and we're going to try to not only open it, we're going to try to connect to it and open it. If it all works, it will say everything is great. If it doesn't work, it's going to go to this catch in which it will tell us that that database doesn't exist or whatever, okay? So if you do get an error message, more than likely it went to this catch right here and, and it couldn't find it for some reason. Maybe you fat fingered the name or whatever, <laughs> okay? Make sure everything is the same. When we close, it's going to look exactly the same thing. We're coming here. We're just going to take it and we're going to close it, okay? And as long as everything, uh, if it's not already closed, we're going to close it, and that'll be done, all right? You shouldn't get any error, really error messages on close, okay? Uh, but this is how this works. These are two uh, functions that I'm providing to you that you can now use in your programs to actually take you through uh, to open and close your databases along with your connection string, all right? Okay, I'm trying to think if, some, if I'm forgetting anything. Again, we put this in a mod because we can use this anywhere. You do not have to update these particular functions at all. This will open up your database based upon the connection string and that database name, and this will close the, data, the, the uh, database based upon, not the connection string, but with the database that's actually open. Does that make sense? Because this is creating our con administrator, and this is closing the con administrator. So we're opening it up. We're calling it con administrator, okay? And we're closing the con administrator, all right? Again, these are two functions outside of our program. Not, we haven't called them yet. They haven't executed yet. We're going to call them from our form when, in, in the place that we're actually going to execute, okay? So if I go back to that form, okay, we will see in my display where I'm going to be open database connection SQL server. That is the name of this right here, okay, oh, right there. It's going to execute it, all right? So what I'm going to do is allow you a little bit of time to go look at this, make sure you understand this concept, and we'll have a part two to this video right after this one. So as soon as you're ready, go to part two, and we'll get into the uh, how the different forms now utilize these functions and do the work that it's supposed to do.